Christians all rejoice and sing. Now is the triumph of our King. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord of life is risen today. Sing songs of praise along his way. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise we in songs of victory. That's love, that life which cannot die. Alleluia, alleluia. Your name we bless, so Sing today with one accord. Alleluia, alleluia. To all the world glad news we bring. Let all the earth rejoice and sing. Sing with hearts uplifted high, the life laid down, the life restored. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Good Christians all rejoice and sing. Now is the triumph of our King. To all the world, glad news bring. Alleluia. The Lord of life is risen today. Sing songs of praise along his way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The church continues to rejoice now in this Easter season. Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And so we rejoice with the Lord who is risen and rises for us this day in word and sacrament to bestow on us those great words of comfort and consolation in our hour of need when he says to the apostles, peace be with you. The peace of Christ be with you this day. As we ask the Lord for every good gift of pardon, peace, and strength to do his will. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus, bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, Adoramus te, glorificamus te, 
Grazi has haji mus tibi, propter maniam gloriam tuam, Domine Deus rex celestis, Deus pater omnipotens, Domine fili unigenite, Jesu Christe, Domine Deus agnus Dei, Filius Patris, Qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Qui tolis peccata mundi, Sushipe deprecationem nostram, Qui sedes a dexteram patris, Miserere nobis, Quoniam tu solus sanctus, Tu solus ut dominus, Tu solus altissimus, Jesu Christe, Cum sancto ho spiritu, In gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you've made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed and by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teachings of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord. And he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. 
Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and said in their midst, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. 
Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear parishioners and friends of St. Anne's Church, as we continue to be tested by this difficult ordeal of the contagion of the coronavirus, which reaches just about every country in the world now, I want to greet each one of you and to reassure you during these days of my prayers for you and your families and loved ones, especially as we now celebrate the season of Easter on this second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. As we reflected at the beginning of Lent so long ago, it seems, none of us could have imagined the situation we have been experiencing. The current circumstances have prevented us from gathering for Mass, especially on Sundays. And perhaps not being in church last week on Easter Sunday was most difficult. Through it all, however, our beautiful church here at St. Anne's in Washington, D.C. remains open during those regular hours for visitation and prayer. Yet the absence of Mass continues, and no doubt that is so very strange for you who love the Eucharist and want to be here physically in the presence of our Lord. So you make today, as you are these weeks and months, a spiritual communion with Him. And this will have to go on and on for a while. And who knows when things will return to normal. Without the public offering of Mass, though, we are still united by bonds of hope and faith and love. And through our personal prayers and sacrifices, we can mature spiritually. It might not feel like Easter for us, but it is Easter. Let's keep that in mind. Even if it doesn't feel like it, Lent is over. Christ has once again conquered sin and death and promised the resurrection as the everlasting hope for all mankind. Therefore, we say every Sunday of Easter, let us rejoice and be glad. Hard as it may sound, hard as it may be, we set our eyes on a distant horizon right now, not looking to just a better day when this pandemic is over, even though that's probably what most of us are longing to see at this hour, but looking rather to the horizon of a real and blessed hope that awaits all of us in the best of days, in heaven, with Jesus, in that eternal home. And this is not just some figment of our imagination or some made-up myth about life in general. No, let's now today get specific about what Easter is essentially all about. The resurrection of the body and of the body of Jesus in particular. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Easter bunnies and Easter eggs. I think most people do. It's what makes Easter Easter for most of our secular culture, like Santa Claus does for Christmas. The Easter bunny and colorful Easter eggs represent prolific fer fertility. That is the springtime of new life. This has always been at the heart of fertility rites and rituals of springtime in most cultures throughout the world, from the dawn of mankind to the present, which celebrate new life over the apparent death of winter. So yes, springtime and new life are all around us. It is a gorgeous day here in Washington. Very, very beautiful spring-like weather. Because that's what we see. That's what we see with the naked eye. And that's what we want to see this time of year. Beauty, springtime, new life. So yes, bring on the Easter bunnies and Easter eggs in one sense. Because that's what it's all about before our eyes in the world during spring and every time the culture celebrates the popular understanding of Easter. However, what we as Christians call Easter is not essentially about bunnies and eggs, as cute and pretty as they are. When we say throughout the Easter season, let us rejoice and be glad, we echo not really nature's general power of life over death, or spring, 
over winter. No, for us who are religious believers, we celebrate not only the general philosophy of life over death, but a powerful and unique life, a personal life, which transcends every springtime and in fact propels us even now with eyes not set on the world, but on a heavenly garden where eternal life, the eternal springtime of life, is promised to those who keep faith in Jesus Christ. That personal life is Jesus, his life, his death, his resurrection. In a word then, because of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, our Christian doctrine of the resurrection of the body is probably among other tenets, the most distinctive belief that we have. It marks us different from every other religion the world has ever known. Not just a generic philosophy of life again, but with the blessed assurance of eternal life, of a resurrection, a glorified body. This is because this has been accomplished by Jesus. And this is what was immediately before the sense of sight in the disciples. They saw the risen Jesus from the dead. It was for this reason, among others, but I think principally because of this reason in the resurrection of Jesus, that the early church 2,000 years ago set her eyes on the resurrection as the pivotal message of the gospel. All the miracles, all the wonderful teachings and wisdom sayings of Jesus, powerful and meaningful as they are, can only be viewed through the lens of what they were properly intended for, a greater faith in Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Mary, the eternal Word made flesh, the Messiah, the Savior, the Redeemer. And so the resurrection of Jesus from the dead became early on the principle of motivation for people's hearts and minds that would help them to transform their eyes from the various philosophical and religious interpretations of immortality to something very unique, the resurrection of the human body. Very unique, very different. Perhaps more than any other theme or belief in the gospel, the resurrection of the human body is what motivated the early church to embrace Jesus fully. When other philosophies and religious persuasions, popular and powerful for eons of time, no longer held them together. Of course, the resurrection belief was part shared by the Pharisees at the time of Jesus, but it was unclear. It was not clear at all. While in fact, many religions speculate about immortality in some vague manner, no religion has ever articulated that belief with specific focus on a single person. Historically, the speculations of immortality came alive in an intense way it had never been witnessed before in the history of mankind. The real event, the real fact of Jesus raised from the dead. And this, as we said, is what drove the early Christians to a greater and greater acceptance of Jesus. Not just his wisdom, not just his philosophy, not just his mirac miraculous powers and healings, which they would long forget when they ran from him on Good Friday. No, when it comes to Easter, Jesus raised from the dead is not embraced in some philosophical manner, not in some psychological projection of general hope for life beyond death, not just in bunnies, fertility rites. Rather, precisely because the disciples could actually see, could actually touch Jesus again. Absolutely incredible, unbelievable. Precisely what the world would call incredible or unbelievable is quite natural. Who would believe what we have seen? Who would believe what we have heard? Yet, Jesus appears to be Jesus appears to the first disciples not in some general philosophy, not just as an idea of life over death. Remember, they were running for their lives. If caught, they knew what would happen to them. No, he appears real, body to body, blood to blood, keeping it real as only God can and does best. They saw and believed. God builds on the natural sense he created human sight, 
they saw. God builds on the natural sense of hearing. They heard the words, peace be with you. And God builds on the natural sense of taste because over the next 40 days after his resurrection from the dead, Jesus would eat and drink with them. He'd often say to Peter, come, bring some food. Let's have breakfast. So they saw, they heard, they tasted, and now they touch. Jesus says to Thomas, touch me, put your hand into my side, put your hand into these nail marks, touch. So Thomas is held up to us today, the doubting Thomas, we call him, to represent all of us who, through the natural senses of the human body, taste, touch, sight, and hearing, believe in something because we have seen, because we have heard, because we have tasted and touched. In this case, it's not a belief in something, but rather in someone. Thomas, place your hand here. Place your hand in my side and do not persist in your unbelief, but believe. And so on that note, we don't merely believe in the resurrection as a doctrine, as a statement, as a philosophy. Rather, we believe in the one himself who gives us reason to believe in the resurrection. Jesus Christ, personally. This is why the personal encounter with Jesus by his disciples, both before, during, and after the resurrection, is what makes our doctrine real. Not just in the mind, but outside the mind, as sensed in the very person before us, before them, Jesus Christ, whom they could see, touch, and hear. You can't get closer to someone than that, body to body, blood to blood. And that was meant for us because Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's you, that's me, that's the 2,000 years of the Holy Spirit that gives us this gift of belief that propels us to acknowledge Jesus as Lord and God and whom we believe even present now at every Mass, body to body, blood to blood in the Blessed Sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. All of us finally, and while this is a bit heady perhaps, all of this is really meant to serve us now in our own age and particularly for us now during this time when most of us are hiding behind locked doors, just as the disciples did that Easter night. They were behind locked doors. They had quarantined themselves in a sense. They were afraid. And there, amidst their silent fears and anxiety, amidst the pain and suffering they remembered only a few days earlier with Good Friday, amidst all the uncertainties of their own lives and future for themselves and their families and friends, in the midst of all of that pandemic, if you will, of that day, Jesus appears to them through locked doors. And he says to them, as he says to you and me today, those immortal words, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And so we pray, deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This blessed hope is here even now under forms of bread and wine. His name is Jesus. He is the Christ. He has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, we proclaim, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us rejoice and be glad. We continue to celebrate 50 days of Easter joy. May the peace of the Lord be with you now and always. Amen. So we offer now our petitions to our loving Savior 
filled with Easter peace and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With Easter faith and hope, let us call upon the Lord in fervent prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Gregory, for all the bishops, priests, deacons, and for all ministers of our church, that he may be, give, be given the grace of the Holy Spirit to faithfully and lovingly minister to the Church of Washington, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners who are ill or recovering, for all who are imprisoned, abused, or suffering in any way, that they may be delivered from every evil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may enkindle in the hearts of young men and women the desire to offer their lives in service to the church as priests and religious, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith may find light, happiness, and peace in the presence of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the end to this pandemic, and we pray for all our healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, all those who are engaged actively to bring about health and safety. We pray for all those who will die this day. We pray for peace asking all these intercessions through the most lively intercession of the greatest woman the universe will ever know, Mary Immaculate, Our Lady of Mercy, Mother of Divine Mercy, when we pray. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee O Virgin of virgins, my mother, to thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, thy mercy hear and answer me, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements before we proceed with the Liturgy of the Eucharist. You can always visit our special uh, website and give of contribution, if you can, to help support us during this time at stannedc.org slash give. You'll find that card now visibly across your screen, and we ask you to be as generous as you can. We're not taking up Sunday collections because we don't have public gatherings, but we do need your support. If you're visiting us for the first time or during these live streams, again, make this your home. You're always welcome, and remember today, at three o'clock, because this is Divine Mercy Sunday, we have the Chaplet of Divine Mercy being prayed live, and you can find those details on our website. All who join us will receive special graces. Details on how to join are found on the homepage of St. Anne's website. And sign up to stay with us, in touch with us with the latest news at stannedc.org slash email. Thank you always for your prayers as we pray for you, we are united as one family in Christ, in good times and in bad, in suffering or in health, until death do us part. The great marriage covenant is here 
between us and Christ through the Mass. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear from him who spoke as none ever spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hands and side, nor follow where he trod. But in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. Help then, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. That when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light, we may behold you as you are with full and endless sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear from him who spoke as none e'er spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hands and side, nor follow where he trod, but in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. Help then, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. That when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light, we may behold you as you are with full and endless sight. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you brought to your word, that we do by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord.
It is truly right and just, our duty and our sacrifice, at all times to claim you, Lord. But on this day of Easter, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Uncheli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in Domine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. We give you praise, Father Most Holy, for you are great. You have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to, to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and time again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit who graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were in supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into the one body by the Holy Spirit, they may become truly a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for your servant Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith to you alone is known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you, look not in our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. qui tollis peccata undi, miserere Agnus Tecregi, qui tolis peccata undi, miserere nobis. Agnus Tecregi, qui tolis peccata undi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep you safe to eternal life.
We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. The Lord will see us through. The Lord will see us through. The Lord will see us through someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe the Lord will see us through someday. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace someday. For those who are viewing by way of live stream, make with me now an act of spiritual communion as you pray before the Blessed Sacrament. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you already are there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. The Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who set us free. And hail him as your heavenly king through all eternity. 
Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side. Rich wounds yet visible above, in beauty glorified. No angel in the sky can fully bear that sight, but downward bends his burning eye at mystery so bright. Crown him the Lord of peace, whose power a scepter sways. From pole to pole that wars may he cease, absorbed in prayer and praise. His reign shall know no end, and round his pierced feet fair flowers of paradise extend their fragrance ever sweet. Crown him with men of blame, the risen Lord sublime, creator of the rolling spheres, the master of all time. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for you have died for me. Your praise and glory shall not fail throughout eternity.